welcome to the Artie Lang Show from the AshleyMadison.com studios. If there's someone dear to you who loves you very much or you'd like to cheat on, give us a call. Huh. You can do it right here. You should give that away. That would be a fantastic. I love the opportunity to cheat on a spouse. Uh, and, uh, you know, in here, in, in the, the Ashley, what better place to do it? It's like the capital of it. You're not yeah. even married yet. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait a few years. Yeah, well, I can start. <laughs> that is the voice of a guy I've known forever. A legendary, a legendary New York guy, like a real New York guy. I used to write a gossip column mm. and uh, knew everybody, real connected. and uh, Connected. Uh, real connected. connected. And, uh, Howard Stern fans will remember. Me and him are forever connected in the sense that it was sort of between me and him to get the, the job, that uh, sitting in Jackie's chair. And the I lead. made you. <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> and uh, one day on the air, A.J. Sucker punched Stutter and John in the face. Wow. And that ended his uh, chances. The, ra the, the headline said, Smack ends Benz's radio career. Now, you smacked them. Uh, you know what? Wasn't Let, it, let's you, clear it up. I thought it was Gary that you smacked. Uh, Gary no, got Gary, my, got, Gary away, got my yeah. forearm. Pretty impressive uh, smack, though. You went around Gary. I go smack. Uh. I go smack and palm, because the fist will put you in prison. Right, I, right, I, right. I go palm. But, you know, they, they were baiting me. John's a baiter. Oh, I forget that show. You you know that. That. They'll, they'll torture you mentally. Like. And I was going through a thing with the E Channel. I was on the, on the contract. I couldn't. John uh, John was in charge of the phone calls. He kept letting calls through. Really? And some were him doing a voice, saying cool. they, they don't like him and he sucks. So uh. I said, one more call that goes through. Right. about my failed talk show that lasted four glorious Now, this weeks. is what I respect. This is why you're a neighborhood guy. I grew up with guys like this. I played American Legion baseball once, and this kid, I won't say his name because he has some other troubles now. Let's call him Ray. Yeah, Ray's uh, pizza. So uh, I mean, I'm on a baseball team with Ray. Uh, an umpire, uh, a, a guy catches a ball on a hop in the outfield and throws it uh, into second base. Yeah. Our runner goes. Now, the ball, he didn't catch it on a fly. Yeah. He caught it on a hop. The ump clearly thinks that he caught it on a fly, and he goes to get the guy out so it's a double play. My buddy Ray goes, he better not call him out. Oh, yeah. And my buddy Ray goes, if the umpire calls him out, I'm going to punch him this in the face. <laughs> now, most people who say that, you know. Yeah. No, that wouldn't hurt. It's so just the an ump, expression. The ump calls him out. My friend Ray calmly puts his glove down, walks out, goes, <laughs> come here. He knew the guy said, Tony, come here. Bang. <laughs> Bang. He punched the umpire in the face, and then he walked back to the bench. Well, uh, and I, we were disqualified. You know, <laughs> yeah, but so you said to John, uh, the, 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 the negative calls were coming through. I had a talk show that just got canceled, and, uh, you know, John had. You know the Italian expression, gots and gone. Oh, no, a little yeah. bit of, he, he didn't like me, whatever. It's a giant so, the negative call. Anyhow, I said, one more bad call comes through. Right. And I want to, I want to punch you in the face. Right, right. And that's it. <laughs> and Howard <laughs> laughed, everybody laughed. And sure enough, the last call he did with his own voice, I said, okay, that's it. Took my headphones off. And First of all, John doing a great voice. It's really tough to know. It's him. That's when he started. DJ it's when he <laughs> suffered. Yeah, it's when he suffered from stuttering. And I, I went in the hallway. Cameras blazing, like they were very ready for this occasion. You know? uh, there are more cameras there than at the World oh Series. Oh my God! Yeah. Red carpet. So I go in it, and I, and then he's laughing, and I went around Gary's head, and yeah. I got John with, maybe the, an inch of the, my left hand. A pussy. It sounded slap. good though. Oh yeah, no, the sound effect was great. Yeah. Was, Gary's teeth hit my forearm, <laughs> but John went, you know, went bananas and. You know, everybody thought I suck or punch. And I said, that's not, a, where are you guys from? If you tell someone you're going to punch him. Right, it wasn't so. It was the direct opposite. It was I said, a, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. So, anyhow, it's on my tombstone. You Google me. Uh, if I discover the cure for cancer tomorrow, it's going to be A.J. Benzer, who's punched Stuttering John, mm -hmm. discovered the cure for cancer, <laughs> died at 80, you know. Now, you know, but the only thing about that, I, I, I don't think you would have taken the job even if offered. You know, let me tell you something. The yeah. hours are like, I mean, I lasted eight and a half years there. Dude. The last couple were trouble, but, well. you know, the, I have a comedian lifestyle, and my other comic friends knew me. When I got that job, they announced it in the paper. My, my other comic friends said to me, listen, Artie, congratulations, I give you two weeks. Exactly. It, it's You got to get up at 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't, dude. Yeah. You know, I'm just a gossip columnist. I knew everybody in the world. I was plugged in a lovely place. Howard, Howard wanted me to come into the studio, uh, stay out till 3 and 4, right. come in smelling like the last chick you were with, <laughs> and whatever you, you know, ate, swallowed, snorted, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I came in, and... Uh, it was real radio, but I, but I knew in my heart, I can't live like I can't go to bed at 8.30. I, I can't do this. So I didn't realize that, that before me was possibly a radio career. Right. To me, it was a good gig. It was fun. I was promoting myself. I had chicks around me. Uh, people knew. It, was, it was fun. 
Then when the papers announced I lost my radio career and then uh, you got the gig, I was like, well, it should go to a comedian. I, but people don't believe me. I didn't. Right. I really couldn't have done that job. Well, you know, for me, I said I, I, it was the most. And you're the best. No, you were the it was, best at it. It's the most unlike me I've ever been. Like really? I said, I, well, I had to, I, I said to myself, I said, listen, this is a huge opportunity. It's like a game changer. Oh, so oh, I needed one yeah. opportunity ever to do that. So I made, I go, I would, age, I, I live in Hoboken and surrounded right. by bars with the hottest broads. Right. I would go to sleep at eight o'clock yeah. on a Thursday night. I'd, I'm hearing chicks clanking drinks around me, I and I would make myself go to sleep. The first five years, I got there, did it, and then, and then I, I started doing heroin. And well, for, you know, for the record, that, that's it doesn't a game, work. That's yeah. a game changer. Yeah. yeah, that was a game changer. I mean, I would get calls at Stern. You know, I, I, I would be at Scores all night, the legendary strip club. Well, I tried that a couple of times, <clears> too. <throat> I would go do comedy, then go out and go right there. That it's doesn't hard. work. That doesn't but work. but I would get calls, Ralph or whoever, they'd say uh, so-and-so from Scores called, uh, you know. And, you know, it's 7.30 in the morning. And yeah. they're still up because they're pumped and primed. Course, and God knows yeah. what they're on. They want to yeah. meet me after my, my Stern show appearance at, at whatever hotel I'm at. Uh, no, it was like Roman times. You yeah. got to you need willpower because the I thing had none. Is, yeah. I had absolutely yeah. none. It makes you an instant rock star being on that it, show. It, it's exposure it, and it and was. How, Howard's one of those guys. He's one of those. He's he's like uh, like a Springsteen or a, a Mick Jagger. Like he's, the combination of the, the brilliant talent and the work ethic. Like that's when you, that's when you create someone like nobody, that. Nobody you know? understands the work ethic, and they always ask me. You know, they, first I got to say, and I'm not knocking Howard. He's Oh my God, he's a god. But to the credit of guys like you and Benji and Fred and Jackie, well, Fred and ben, is a genius. Yeah. The, you know, I wanted to say my jokes on the air. I thought, right, was, right. but these guys write quicker than I could say anything. And there were there were there were there were jokes in the box written for Howard to read. Yeah. And as funny as Howard is organically, they those guys put a lot of jokes. Well, ja in the box. Jackie, you know, invented that old thing, kind of perfected that, and then. The, the, the thing that helped my career indirectly was I was horrible at that. I would try to write in his voice. Can't, yeah. He never used it. Yeah. Everything Benji or Fred wrote, he almost everything he would use. He would use funny. It, yeah, yeah. And so one day Howard pulls me aside and goes, oh, this is it, I'm going to get fired because he hates the jokes or whatever. And that was part of the job, I thought. And he said, um, he goes, listen, uh, don't write jokes now. Just say them. Just it. say them. So I go, well, how am I going to say them? He goes, I'm going to leave your mic on all the time. Good. And besides Robin, that had never happened to anyone. So it actually helped me get more well-known. Yeah, you know, you know? between me and you, I think that's what got John and some of the guys pissed off. Because I always say, and I love the show, and I love, you know, it was a fraternity. And I always say, those guys, including Howard, he'll admit this, those are the guys that got picked last in the schoolyard right. to play ball. Yeah. I didn't get picked last. Well, John was a starter, and I mean, neither. I mean, I was like, well, a guy, yeah, yeah. you know, we were athletes. We we had a, but the, there was some animosity. And but Howard left my mic on, and he very rarely told me to calm down. I could say whatever I wanted. Right. I still have those tapes, uh, cassettes from '96, '97, '98. But oh, those are the best days of my life. Those were the best. <laughs> and those are the best. But the, the, did you did you know when you got the gig that it was like the game changer? Did you? Well, because, because I knew it better than maybe some other guys because. Well, I knew I wasn't maybe the funniest guy of all the comedians going for that, but I knew I, I was a fan of the show more than anyone because I started listening when I was 12. I mean, yeah, exactly. And uh, With Don Imus. Uh, yeah, so exactly. I mean, this is the kind of thing. You, you, it's the kind of job you didn't even dream of because who no. would know it would be possible? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I was I was smart enough to realize it. An agent that I had at the time in L.A., you talked about stupid agents. He said to me, I, I did a sitcom with Norm for a couple of years. Sure. That yeah. got canceled. Jackie left. And life's all about timing, and I got that gig. My, when I get offered, my, the agent goes, you're not going to go from a primetime sitcom to radio. And I said, you know, I want to cross with the phone. I'm not doing the Z Morning Zoo in St. Louis. Hey, good morning. And I'm doing radio. I'm doing the radio right, show. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's no like, cowbells. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. You got to look at the big picture. You, you, like, it's the biggest show of all time. Ever. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. they didn't get that. But uh, within a week, I was playing 3,000 seats instead of a club. Well, you see, you, you had something to play off that. You know, at being a comic, I mean, you could parlay that, the Howard Stern stuff. I mean, even... Right, yeah. Come yeah, on, my yeah. God. I, no. I really couldn't parlay it into money, but I parlayed it into influence and power. And, you know, uh, to this day, you know, we I was at your book signing in L.A. Right. Hey, there's people, Stern fans, who are like zombies. You're signing th their book, and then they look at me, and I'm a Stern guy, and they want me to sign your book as well. They're like <laughs> zombie people, you know? I know. It's, it's, it's the insane. fans are pretty impressive, very yeah, loyal. Yeah.
Someone but, buy four books. But I, but I still talk to John. You know, I, John is one of those guys. When's See, the last time you talked to John? Well, we have a Facebook kind of relationship now. See, uh, I hate that. I refuse to do that with old friends. Like, he tried to tweet me once, and I'm like, call me, you jerk. Off. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, you guys were together longer. But John, you know, he used to wear his heart on his sleeve. You, yeah. know, you really knew where he stood. He was, uh, you know, he was picked on. He stuttered. Oh, absolutely. Then he started getting, you know, a little bit macho and... That's when that's when stuff started getting bad. But right. but on, on Facebook, he's very open and honest about his life and his uh, and divorce yeah. and his daughter, and yeah. it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. <laughs> when you announce, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I'd say, I don't want to announce his, but he announces it. You know, my daughter's a lesbian. She got elected to the press. Like, oh, whoa, you know, really? Okay, you, yeah. yeah, I mean, he does that. So he's performing uh, as a stand-up. You know. Okay, uh, and he says, uh, you know, he says, uh, I'm going to be at this such and such club and uh, da, 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 Valentine's Day. And I said, John, how about I show up and you get to smack me back? Oh, That'll wow. be the best show of you. Wow, know. okay. And he flipped out. That's the first time I responded. Oh, my God, you got to come on. I'll do it on stage. Oh, my God, we're going to get okay. to promote that. But I'm not going to do it. No, don't do that. I'm not going to do it. It's the circus. It's the circus. It's the past. Yeah. Well, I want to see him. I, I worked with him for a long time, but he got a divorce. I didn't know about he, that. Yeah. Things went bad. Well, yeah. As they do for all of us at times. Things went bad. Things went bad for me. Things went bad for him. You know, uh, you look back on those times, and it really was like a college fraternity of a bunch of crazy guys right. who got along, loved each other, uh, but... You know, when when the mics uh, when when the mics cut off, crap, yeah, crap yeah, went no, down. a lot of you got you got to have a lot of willpower and you get carried away and stuff. But I, I so so now what gets you to go to L.A. like kind of a quintessential New Yorker? What, <laughs> why do you go out there? Well, because uh, I got fired from the Daily News by Pete Hamill. Why would that happen? He's a jerk off. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> no, he's my he was my idol as a writer. He's the one of the best, uh, writers, best writers. His ever. book, Pete Hamill's book of drinking life. Excuse me, excuse yeah. me. I, yeah. I I I came here. To to this show, in my shoulder bag is one book, A Drinking Life. I've read no, it three times. No, it's not. The book I just said is in your bag. The Drinking Life. His really? father with the wooden leg, the yeah, whole yeah, thing. No, Believe yeah. me, it's in my bag. I travel with it. I, the I way love Pete the Hamill talks about his father oh in his book, God. who had a wooden leg a, and would work in the factory. I <laughs> strapped it over his shoulder. Yeah, every man. time you it, bitch it, about something, you think about yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, you know, I thought uh, Pete Hamill came aboard, my idol, womanizer, fist fighter, drinker. No, when he got to the Daily News, he was a, a changed man and no more fighting, no more womanizing. He didn't like gossip. Right. And he didn't like, the, you know, talking about Pam Anderson's But it's, it's and what that. sells paper. It's exactly. what gets people to read his stuff well, about well, South he, America. Well, here's yeah. the story. He goes, yeah, I want you to write about the new immigrants who are coming into the city. I said, I don't want to write about that. I don't look at Haitian people. I don't care about that. I want to write about... Pam Anderson's yeah. tits. Oh, you know, right, that's, right, that's right, right. So he fires me. I was making a lot of money, too. But, but, but uh, what do you think? Someone else wasn't going to come in and write about the same thing? That's what No, he, was, he didn't want it. But it was six, months, six, and six months after he fired me, they fired him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the paper circulation went down. I like to think it's because I wasn't there anymore. And not just me. Michael Lewis, who was my partner in crime on, on the page. But uh, I still talk to Pete. Uh, you know, I see, love see him. that's why I'm a scumbag. If I was Pete Hamill, a uh, classy guy, he becomes a great writer. If I had that name, Pete Hamill, you know what I'd do? What? I'd open up a towing garage. <laughs> Hamill tow. <laughs> <laughs> Hamill tow. I mean, what, that would be the greatest thing of all. Hamill tow. Yeah. Who, would, who wouldn't pull into that garage? Now, his, his Dennis Hamill, his brother, <laughs> is, is still, his brother still writes. <laughs> Dennis doesn't like me at all because I spoke, as I didn't speak uh, good about his brother. But uh, yeah, what's Dennis, your, right. Dennis, what, Dennis has a tough, they're, they're tough guys. I mean, they're, they're legitimate tough guys. They what's really an are. item, what's an item, a crazy item you put in a gossip column that you wish you had? Like, did you ever, like, oh hurt God. somebody I where ruined, you said, I shouldn't have done you know, that? You say you ruined lives? Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, I, I, look, I broke big stories. I'm, uh, I wrote, I, my story was Michael Jackson's pedophilia story was my story. Right. I got that call. I got that, that juice from a guy, an old Jewish guy who was, who was a, a PR guy for, for a clothing store. And he happened to know the wife of the guy who was messing around with Michael Jackson. It, it's so convoluted, but it all made sense. But as far as you we broke, broke that, that story? story. Yeah. We broke it. Yeah. But uh, that he's with kids, you mean? That he took this kid, Jordan Chandler. Oh, Jordan, yeah. And right. I put I put the kid's name in the paper, and then I got even further. See, I got deeper into my job. I didn't just write the stories. I tended to date the celebrities and people I was writing about. So I ended up dating 
Michael Jackson's ex sister I thought, I thought you were going to say Jordan Chandler. No, I didn't touch Jordan. Uh, <laughs> but he's cute. Very cute kid. When he got uh, no, I, uh, Jermaine Jackson's ex-wife I ended up dating, and I got... Isn't that, isn't that uh, What's-His-Face's kid? Wasn't he married to... Uh... Jermaine was married to a woman named Margaret Maldonado. Beautiful. Okay. She's now a designer in L.A. Right. Uh, but no, I, I got very close to... And Jermaine hated you because of that. I don't care about Jermaine. It was Michael. I wanted to get closer to Michael and hear hear his phone calls and, knew, and know what he was doing. With that's the, an important thing. I don't think that's. I mean, I if, was, he, if he was really a pedophile, he, people well, should know I, about I, it. I, I can't. We can't prove it, but for God's sake, if it was my nephew in the basement with two doors that were locked with alarms and picked, you know, someone's gonna get hurt that night. No, you know? exactly. Right. But, I, but 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 when I was ten and eleven, I wanted to be Michael Jackson. Yeah. I mean, I really did. I wanted to dance like him. I wanted to. Yeah. So it, it was a really weird thing when he died, and my daughter's nine, and she cries because he's dead, and I'm like, I'm the jerk off who wrote the story about him being a pedophile. Well, there's no know. question about the fact that he was talented, but, you know, look, but I, a lot I, of artists have some dark side. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure they do. Yeah, but then you're right. It is, it is like the stories I'm sleeping with kids. Like, who does that? Who why does why that? is she sleeping with Patty Davis, Ronald Reagan's daughter? Uh -huh. She came to... to but as an, when she was an adult, though. Well, not as a kid. Yeah. I'm 51, but right. she 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 posed for Playboy. Oh, you bang you bang Reagan's daughter? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I was a real Republican for a while. <laughs> <clears throat> what now, was she... that like? Did you ever bang her like at a, like his estate or something? In a what? Did you ever bang her at like his house or something? No, at the Essex house in uh, Central Park. Okay. Uh, she... How long that go on for? Five six months. Now, uh, Trump hates you because you shared a chick with him, right? Yeah, he took away a girl of mine. I took her away back. That's that's old history. We were both dating the same girl. That, the reason I left New York, I got fired, and then there was a show at the E Channel for me, Mysteries. Well, and I remember that. Yeah. So when I went to L.A., yeah, if you have a beautiful girl in New York, you know all the jerk offs in New York with the money are going to go after. Her. I was away. I had to make my own living again, and and uh, you know she got caught up in that, and I've made peace with Donald since then. We talk. All the guys that I. Hated, punched, smacked, kicked. I've eventually made made amends. You know, I did, you, did you ever feel your life was in danger? No, his was, not mine. No, but would you, did it ever happen to you where your life? Oh was in yeah, danger? well, yeah. I got uh, my car was blown up. My uh, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, uh, yeah, that's that's one. That's Chuck, the, yeah. Chuck Zito. What happened there? Chuck Zito. Not, I know the not, Chuck you know, Zito. That's an old story, but Chuck Zito was a guy like basically the toughest guy who's ever lived. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and he punched you in the face. Well, and he, he asked you to come, and you politely went, I went and got I went and got my beating, because it was the right thing to do. Uh, a street thing. It was a misprint in a magazine story about me that made it sound like I called him a rat, which I didn't. But this is the worst thing you could call him. I, exactly. I would never do that. And he said to me, go to scores. I said, OK, I'm coming. He gave you a place and address a time oh, ago yeah, I went to the where he's going to punch you in I the went, face. My right. nephew, Jack, the, my, my boys are there, Jack and Joe. They were there. And they said, <laughs> I got to go get a beating. They said, well, I said, don't worry. <laughs> And, and he's with this guy named Johnny C. You've seen this guy in movies. I know who he is. You know Johnny yeah. C. You know, he's an actor. But, you know, he does other things on the side. <laughs> so we find out, like, a mop room yeah. in scores. And they lock the door. And Chuck just gives me New York Magazine and says, start reading. Oh, God. So I started reading. And I, I got to the word juxtaposition. And I knew at that point, you know, there was going to be a problem with him understanding the word. Oh, wait, he wanted you to read the article where he you He wanted me yeah. to read the, the article that the girl wrote that said... A, a sentence I said, everybody's a rat. Uh, but I didn't apply it to Chuck. She just put it there. You know, And what? some chick did it. And Na uh, Nancy Jo Sales, she made her bones on me. She's a big writer for Vanity Fair now. But that was her first story for New York Magazine. And, uh, you know, Chuck, when I got to the word rat, a, a right hand came on my button mm -hmm. and just bang. I was out. I woke up, six or seven strippers trying to wake me up. And then Chuck got a beep. From a, a big mafioso guy with the Gambino, with the Genovese's, uh, Ralphie, uh, Ralphie Capolo. Right. I never heard of Found him. Found him in an oil drum. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he said it's done. <laughs> he, he had to get permission from Ralphie because uh, I would shoot my mouth. Yeah, they got permission from guys at Rayo's. I mean, this is like movie stuff. Right, right, right. And uh, so they knocked me out. I got up. Then me and Chuck had dinner. And he had Penny Alla Vodka. <laughs> well, listen, if you're going to get knocked out, the best way to get woken up is by six or seven strippers. I was beat. It was Forget the doctors. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need Val. I don't need the uh, you know, Percocet. Give me uh, uh, Dusty. You know. <laughs> Thank you, Venus. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got to take a break. The great A.J. Ben is here. You can see why he's good on the radio. <laughs> yeah. We should lock the doors after that rap. Yeah, the Artie Lang Show. Right. The Artie Lang Show. Weeknights on Audience. Only on DirecTV.